Filipinos take pride in having their country represented internationally in different fields and categories, like boxing in sports and Miss Universe in pageantry. Their support is pretty evident in their views and comments on social media. This is especially true when showcasing the culture and values of the Philippines. Hence the tagline, it's more fun in the Philippines. But are you really proud to be a Filipino? However, some challenges come with this. Other fields lack different kinds of support that would bring out the best in them. Nonetheless, the people strive to keep this vibrant, and these are the different values and culture that the Philippines is known for. Family-oriented Family is very important to Filipinos. Because of this, it's not unusual for many families to live in the same home. Children are not expected to leave their parents' house until they get married. Also, they are responsible for taking care of the elderly parents at home instead of leaving them in home for the agent. That's why nurses and caregivers from the Philippines are known for their compassionate service to their patients because of the high value they have on their family. Humor and Positivity Filipinos have a tendency to see the positive side when faced with difficulties. The Filipino urge to see the bright side of things is a sentiment shared by the whole country. Because of the frequency to which natural disasters strike the Philippines, people have learned to use humor and positivity as a coping mechanism, much like some children laugh to hide their embarrassment after stumbling. Flexibility and Adaptability One of the most common expressions in the Philippines is Bahala na? Which means, whatever happens, happens. It's perhaps the best example of how much Filipinos value flexibility and adaptability. This expression represents a trust in a greater being and an acceptance of the inevitability of one's own faith. People use the word Bahala na? Do not perceive anything wrong with it since it acts as a kind of positive affirmation that helps them to cope with the situation right at the moment. Religious Adherence Religion is deeply embedded in Filipino culture. Filipinos are very religious, that is why they value it. Every now and then, religion plays a very big part in the society and the everyday lives of the Filipinos. Christianity has the highest population in the Philippines, having more than 80% of the population. That's why Catholic Church's views still affect the passing of some laws, and many communities still have fiestas in honor of their patron saints and many of the regular non-working holidays are devoted to honoring different religion activities and festivities. Hospitality Filipinos are naturally hospitable. Visitors, no matter where they're from, can count on receiving a warm welcome from Filipinos. Visitors are often treated to a meal, some form of entertainment, and if hosts have time, a tour from local destinations. In the Philippines, no one leaves with an empty stomach. Visitors are also encouraged to purchase or sometimes receive a pasalubong or souvenirs before they leave, which often comes in form of delicacies and local sweets. Filipinos love to hold festivities and festivals, where one of the elements to keep this vibrant is music. Music evolves and changes from region to region, where history, topography, and culture all play a part in this dynamic musical trend. Each province in the country has its own celebration called festivals in which people show their gratitude through dances, parades, and loud music. For the natives of Aklan, the drum serves as their major musical instrument to accompany them in the celebration of the Ati Ati Han Festival. Meanwhile, the Kalinga group in Cordillera uses gangsa, a set of flat gongs played in an ensemble. Finally, Mindanao is the home for the Kalintang Ensemble, a row of horizontally laid small gongs traditionally composed of women players. 
On the other hand, original Filipino music or OPM showcases its uniqueness from Pinoy pop songs to other genres of music. OPM classics typically occupy the karaoke song queue in parties and transition to modern ones. The Philippine movie and TV series industry has so much to offer, from award-winning actors and actresses to world-class series and movies. The heartfelt and true-to-life experience in every piece and the heartbreaking and tear-jerking themes really stand out every time. A million words can be explained in the eyes of the actors and actresses that move the audience. The shine of the Philippine film industry may seem prolonged because of the lack of support from different sectors in the country, but the astonishment of the world for the industry always prevails. Recently, different actors and actresses won awards in the global scene. The performance of Kylie Versace in The Housemaid gained the Best Actress Award at the 2022 Distinctive International Arab Festival Award in Dubai United Arab Emirates. Philippines! Jody Jodie Santa Maria won the Best Actress at the 2022 Asian Academy Creative Awards held in Singapore for her role in The Broken Marriage Vow, the first for a Filipina. Dolly Dalyon earned a nomination as Best Supporting Actress in the Motion Picture category of the 80th Golden Globe Awards for her acclaimed performance in Triangle of Sadness. In the 2021 crime drama, Rest Back, a launching movie for Vince Relon, the actor recounts winning the Best Actor Award at 19 Asian Film Festival. Christian Bablas never gets tired of learning the ABCs of acting. Win-Win Marquez ecstatic over Best Actress win at NY Film Festival. Apart from the mentioned actors and actresses, several other artists also bagged awards, not just in the global market but also in the Philippines itself, like Bel Mariano, Liza De Castro, and so much more. The Philippine film industry never fails to astonish its audience. This leads to other countries' desire to produce adaptations of various Philippine movies and TV series. Dan kamu jadi pemandu wisataku. Asik! Pagi-pagi banget sih, Nick! Huh? Kita Kita, played by Alessandra De Rossi and Empoy Marquez in 2017, was recreated in Indonesia with a new title, Sinta Itu Buta. Indonesia also adopted Kadenang Ginto after the original shows aired in other countries. The original series Hanggang Saan, played by veteran actress Silvia Sanchez, will be Turkey's first adaptation of a Filipino show. It takes cues from the ethical dilemma in Fox Turkey's Birani Ninguna, a mother scene, top billed by actress Osge Osburg in 2020. Other countries like Malaysia, India, the USA, and Cambodia have their own adaptations of Filipino movies and TV series. Apart from that, different feature films, documentaries, and short films garnered international awards. To name a few, On the Job, The Amazing Eight by Eric Matti, John Arcilla, 78th Venice International Film Festival 2021, Italy. Hayop ka! The Nympha Di Maano Story by Avid Leongoren, Best Feature Film, Festival Film of Anima Vanish, Anima Fest, Gadans, Poland. Metamorphosis by J. E. Tiglau, Special Mention Jury Award, International Narrative Feature, New York LGBTQ Plus Film Festival. Aswang by Alex Ann Arumpak, Coupe de Croix du Jury, Festival International du Film and Soleil de Lille de Gua, France. Harana by Marie Hamora, Jury Prize, Narrative Shorts Competition, Sarasota Film Festival 2021 US. Francesca Farr, Outstanding Dramatic Actress, Sarasota Film Festival 2021 US. Movies and TV series in the Philippines represent the country well. The filmography in the Philippines always shows the culture and adapts and embraces what's popular to reach its peak. The world appreciates the beauty and brilliance of the Philippine film industry. Now is your time to do the same. 
Different film festivals are held in the Philippines to showcase the amazing creations of the industry. The Cinemalaya Philippine Independent Film Festival is held every year in August at the Cultural Center of the Philippines Complex. It aims to promote and develop independent films in the country. As a celebration for Buwanong Wika, the Pista ng Pelikulang Pilipino is held. The festival has three categories, the competing, which are the main feature films, the five-minute short films, or Cine Kabataan Shorts, and the non-competing, which includes films that have won at other festivals. During the Metro Film Festival, films shown in the theaters are only those approved by the jurors, excluding international films. This highly promotes Filipino films. The festival starts every 25th of December. That day, movies approved by the jurors will be available in the cinemas. Several film festivals and award-winning bodies in the Philippines promote the industry as it strives for the global market. Sunday Beauty Queen, a documentary following the journey of immigrant workers in Hong Kong to find purpose and dignity in pageantry. Baby Ruth Villanueva directed the documentary. It won Best International Documentary at the London Labour and Cinemasia Film Festivals. Ma Rosa, where Jacqueline Jose won the Palme d'Or Best Actress Award at the Keynes Film Festival, the story revolves around the life of Rosa. Whether the Weather is Fine earned the TFL Co-Production Award in Torino Film Lab. The movie is a surrealist and satirical take on the aftermath of the devastating Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. A Thousand Cuts, Decada Sisenta, Ordinary People, Bokao, the sweet taste of salted bread and undies, and smaller and smaller circles also join the list of movies presented in Vogue PH. The Philippine movie and TV series industry deserves more recognition than it is getting. The award-winning pieces created and their success are the result of consolidated efforts of the artists on the screen and the people at the back of the camera. If we stop showing support for the industry, who will? And if we do not show our support now, when? For the progress and future of the Philippine movies and TV series industry, together, let's take part in this journey. Sana ako pa rin. Ako na lang. Ako na lang ulit. Many people in our nation have given up arts and placed a higher value on financial security. Anyone who wishes to pursue art is frequently asked, What will you do with art? Will it really feed you and put a roof over your head? Filipino art hasn't entirely been put on a high pedestrian in years. More recent artists are often shunned, saying that their work is unoriginal or not meeting a certain standard or not as good as their Western counterparts. Another problem is how we limit our artists. Oftentimes, original or unconventional ideas are not accepted since they are not what people are used to. Have you seen the arts of the Philippines? Philippine art are the works of art that have evolved and collected in the Philippines from the country's earliest day of civilization to the current day. The wide range of cultural influences on the country's culture and how this affects sharpened the country's arts are reflected to both its society and the non-Filipino. The traditional arts and non-traditional arts of the Philippines can be separated into two separate categories. As of today, the National Museum of the Philippines maintains the National Fine Arts Collection, which is currently housed at the old legislative building in Manila's National Museum of Fine Arts. It is made up of sizable collection of works by Filipino visual artists, including paintings, sculptures, icons, sketches, mixed media, and photography. It contains significant works created by Philippine national artists from the 18th and the late 21st centuries. Take a visit at our national museums and discover the beauty of our culture and understand our traditions and histories through different arts they showcase there. History 
The literature of the Philippines is predominantly a reflection of the influence of the Spaniards on the indigenous culture and traditions. The people of Manila and native groups within the Philippines used to write on bamboo and the Arikisiye palm. They used knives for inscribing the ancient Tagalog script. The literature thus preserved was limited to the 17 basic symbols of the language. With just three vowels and consonantal symbols that had predetermined, Inherent sound, the literature handed down was in the raw state and needed to be developed. The Classics Philippine literature reflects a diverse group of works which are mostly grounded on traditional folktales, socio-political histories, and real-life experiences. Such books have since promoted Filipino cultural values, told daily struggle of locals, and have instilled a remarkable lesson or two. Ibong Adarna by Jose de la Cruz Florante at Laura by Francisco Balagtas Noli Metangere by Dr. Jose Rizal El Filibusterismo by Dr. Jose Rizal Mga Ibong Mandaragit by Amado V. Hernandez The Woman Who Had Two Navels by Nick Joaquin Poon, a novel by F. Sonil Jose Banaag at Sikat by Lope K. Santos Ilustrado by Miguel Sihuko Dekada si Senta by Luwalhati Bautista. Smaller and Smaller Circles by F.H. Batakan. Aba, nakakabasa na pala ako by Bob Ong. Spanish Period Literature Philippine literature was born in Spanish. There had been a rich literary tradition in the island before the Spaniards arrived. But it was the Spanish who started to publish those tales and stories. The works of Rizal, the best-known Filipino writer and national hero, are a result of the intercultural process. However, not only did the Spanish writing era not finish at the end of the Spanish colonial time in the Philippines, but it also began its golden age at the very same time that the American occupation started. American Influence Philippine literary production during the American period in the Philippines was spurred by two significant developments in education and culture. One is the introduction of free public instruction for all children of school age, and two, the use of English as medium of instruction in all levels of education in public schools. Free public education made knowledge and information accessible to a greater number of Filipinos. Those who availed of this education through college were able to improve their social status and joined a good number of educated masses who became part of the country's middle class. The use of English as medium of instruction introduced Filipino to Anglo-American modes of thought, culture, and life ways that would be embedded not only in the literature produced but also in the psyche of country's educated class. It was this educated class that would be wellspring of a vibrant Philippine literature in English. Keeping a pulse on Philippine literature Philippine literature coming a long way from its humble pre-Spanish beginnings and nationalistic propagandas to modern 21st century writings is an expression of our culture and experiences. As long as there are those who write their ideas on papers and share them with others, it's hard to think that we could actually run out of things to read from any group of people. Yet, there are Lasallians who believe that our country's literature is heading towards its death under Filipinos' alleged preference for foreign words. Is there a reason to be worried? Filipinos love sports. The whole country joins Manny Pacquiao when he gets in the ring. The Philippines fell in love with weightlifting quickly and hard when Heidi Linias took home the Olympic Championship gold medal. And there is a basketball court practically in every barangay across the nation. We aren't short on passion, and neither do we lack talent. So what is it that is making us feel so miserably? The government is always quick to claim the victories of many Filipino athletes competing internationally. One example is the historic wins of Filipino athletes in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. The government was quick to claim their victories as an achievement of the Duterte administration. The truth is that their stories are among the many stories of Filipino athletes who were filled by their own government. Heidelin Diaz revealed in 2019 that she was having financial difficulties funding her attempt to participate in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. 
supporters of Duterte viewed this as an assault on the president, so they violently attacked Diaz and called her arrogant and ungrateful. Filipino chess player and grandmaster Wesley Saw had to switch allegiance just so he could thrive his sport. Saw used to compete for the Philippines, but he was pushed to his limit when the PSC withheld incentives after he won a gold medal in a competition that the commission did not officially recognize. Saw now competes under the U.S. flag. Olympic boxing qualifier Irish Magno recently revealed that she was unable to focus on her training because she was worried if her family could even eat regularly. She said that the allowance she receives from the government was delayed and enough only for her training needs. She was unable to send money to her family in the province. The common denominator from all the athlete stories mentioned is the lack of ample support from the Philippine government. According to an in-depth analysis of GMA News, the Philippine sports sector is seriously underfunded compared to our neighbors. In 2015, the PSC received 800 million pesos only. For comparison, Thailand allotted 14.37 billion pesos for its sports budget in 2011. The government fails to properly invest in Philippine sports programs mainly because the government is in a permanent austerity. As with anything that the Philippine government does, it wants the greatest output with the littlest input. The government is quick to claim glory, but slow to reimburse training, lodging, travel, registration, and food expenses. Filipino athletes not only have to compete in their respective sports, they also have to compete with each other for scarce resources. These are the culture and values of the Philippines that represent our identity and pride. The said beliefs, traditions, and customs make a Filipino. Let us show our support for the country and spread awareness of our culture.